other verse it says, where the spirit is, there is liberty. So we are praying that as we have called upon his presence, any burden that we have from our homes, anything that is even within us that we don't know, we are calling upon the living God that he will visit us, that everybody will live here with the liberty, with the freedom that we need in every area, known or unknown. Even burdens that we carry that sometimes don't know. Those who came on Fridays about issues in our bloodlines. There are burdens that are following us sometimes that we don't know. We are praying for the liberty of God in our presence. For where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. So we are praying that Father, let your presence be on us. We are not living here the same. We are not living here the same. We are calling for your liberty in every area of our lives. Ah, anyone who came here with a specific problem, we are tapping into this and we are saying that God, we are not living back the same. Lift up your voice and pray. Our Father, we have come before you. Ali Asanda, your word says that where the Spirit of God is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. Father, we have come before you. We have come to your throne of grace. We are coming for that liberty. We are praying the Father come in your own special way. Release us from bondage. Visit us. Father, as we are in the year of abundance, anything that is a hindrance in our way, we are moving it. Aranka Bale, Asin Kambara, Abande Kasanda, Aramba Karandi, Asanda Baranda, Ayanda Barandi, Abasanda Baranda, Arandi Asanda Bar. Lift up your voice and prayer. Abale Sankamba, Aramba Liasa, Arandia, for where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. Ayanda Bak, Arandi Abansa, Akarandi. Arandi amba, abanko arandi asanda ba, arandi amba kashanda, abankalia, abanka arandi asanda, abanka si aranda. Father, release us of our chains. Father, release us to the next level. Abandi asandi, abandi asanda, yendi abasin kamba, aramba kasandi aranda, yemba kasanda baranda, yamba kasi ambaranda, abanka asanda ba. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Time of worship. I want to just read a little scripture before we go there. The Bible describes in Revelation for how our Lord Jesus Christ looks on his throne. And the Bible says that there are 24 angels that surround this throne and four living creatures. And in Revelation chapter 4, Revelation 4, I'm reading from verse 8 to 11. It says, the four living creatures, each having six wings were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night. They keep saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Verse 9 says, Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, he who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders would fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, to receive honor, to receive power. For you have created all things, and by you they all exist, and they all were created. Hallelujah. This morning we want to join our voices with the heavenlies, and we are saying that, Lord, you are worthy to receive every glory, to receive every honor, and to receive every praise. You want to just lift your voice and worship the presence of the Lord in this room. You want to just lift your voice and give him all the praise, all the honor, and all the adoration. You want to give him thanks, worship him for who he is. Father, we adore you for who you are. This morning we join with the angels and heavenly beings and we worship you and we say you are holy, Lord. We say that you are worthy of worship. We say that you are worthy of praise we say there is nobody like you there is none like you there is none that can be compared to your beauty father your glory fills this room and we bless your name we bless you for your presence we bless you for your bless you for your hand in this place we have come to honor you jesus we have come to sing worthy unto your name because you deserve this and more in the name of jesus Oh 
We want to praise the Lord. The Bible says that the Lord inhabits in the praises of his people. As we praise him, I want you to have the faith that he is here. Amen. Amen. Let's start the forward and piano.
give it up for Jesus. He is good. Amen. I don't see you smiling. We are still in the love month, though, you know. You see them so beautifully dressed in their red and white. Come on, wish somebody a happy day. Tell them that they are welcome to church. Belated Valentine to you all. And for those of you who are worshiping with us for the first time, we extend a very warm welcome to you. Kindly take your seat in God's presence. My name is Kathy. And for those of you who are watching us online, we welcome you to today's service. This is Faith Life Church. At Faith Life Church, our mission is simple. And it's to bring those who are far from God into a state of personal relationship with him. Now this we do by equipping you to enhance your life and to add value to it. And then also to others. So here in this church, we focus on friendship, honest friendship. We focus on constant prayer. We focus on heartfelt worship. And most importantly, the teaching of God's word. So whether you are looking for a place to call home, or you have just moved in into this area, you are warmly welcome. Amen. Amen. Now, every Sunday morning like this, we invite you and your family to join us for dynamic music, teaching, and prayer, which is applicable to your life. Our services begin at 8.30 a.m. every Sunday morning. And we begin with songs of gratitude and praise. You will then hear a message that is relevant and applicable to your life concerning the challenges that we face each day. The Bible tells us that we should continue to hear the word of God. And so we ask that you come in and be blessed by these services. Now our messages that are, are preached here by our head pastor are available on podcasts. They are also available on Spotify, on Amazon, and every other broadcast platform. Every Tuesday, we have a counseling session from 10 a.m. to 12 noon at the church office. And every Friday from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., there's also a prophetic service in this auditorium. Please don't be missing these services. They are mind-blowing and life-transforming. Amen. Amen. Now, each one of us has the opportunity to help with the Great Commission. We ask that you volunteer your time, your services. You know, we have gained skills over the years, skills from our work and from our occupation, whatever we do. We can use that to help with the work of God. Amen. So you can join the protocol ministry, and this comprises of ushers, the protocol officers, the security, facility managers. And then also you can join the media, the music, information, finance, children, evangelism, evangelism ministries, and then the intercessors. If you want to be a part of any of these ministries, you can see me or Pastor Jay after the service, and we will link you up. You don't need any special skills, just your passion and your commitment. At some time during the service, the offering banks will come around. Please give for the work of God. Now, this is an announcement for all church workers. All church workers are meeting on 21st of February, 2024, Wednesday. That is this coming Wednesday at 6 p.m. If there's any other announcement that I missed, pastor would announce it when he mounts the pulpit. It's testimony time. Are you happy? Yeah. Okay, let's give it up for Lady Joanna as she comes to help us with it. Hello. I call it, it's that moment. Say, it's that moment. it's that moment. And you know what the moment is. The moment when we share with each other what the Lord has done for us to encourage each other and to strengthen us. So, can we start? Who has a testimony? Hey. <laughs> Welcome, Hannah. Praise the Lord. So I want to thank God this morning for my life. Last week, 
I decided to pay a visit to my dad. He wasn't feeling well, so we spoke on phone and he told me that he needed some amount of money. And I told him that, oh, I don't have money, but let's see what I will do when I'm coming. So back in SHS, I was staying with one of my madam. She promised me some money. When I called, she would be like, oh, I will send it. Things are hard, I will send it. So I was there the day that I wanted to pay a visit to my dad. That was the same day she sent the money. And it was the exact amount of money that I'm supposed to give to my dad. So I just want to thank God. And secondly, <laughs> secondly, I want to thank God. School has reopened, and we are supposed to check our results. Everyone was scared. There was this particular cause that my family is not crying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Miss Yasa. So I was like, hey, if I have referral, I have to pay for receipts. Where am I even going to get the money? So each and every semester, when you have three D, they give you dismissal. They sack you. They don't even wait for you for the second semester when you have been promoted. They sack you. That first semester, you have to go. So they give out dismissal to people. They went home Friday. Then if you have referral, they'll mention your name. So I, I was scared that that one course that told me, hey, I was scared that uh, they didn't mention my name. And I said, okay, I'm going to check my results. When I went to check, it was C plus. I was even expecting just C, the plus graph. <laughs> so I want to thank God. Amen. 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 We thank God for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, I want to thank God for my life. This thing you are saying here just happened yesterday. I was going to cut my hair and the fan. Yes. So if I'm standing here, it's just by the grace of God. Amen. So I want to thank God. I want to thank God. <laughs> See how far you brought me, Lord, I've come to worship you, see how far you've brought me, Lord, I've come to worship you. Amen. Amen. We thank God for protection and we thank God for taking you out of the, of the hand of the fowler. That the, the, whatever the enemy planned, it didn't work. This is why when we come and stand here and we say praise the Lord, open up your mouth and praise the Lord. Because many are the things that the evil one might have planned that because of the hand of God, it didn't happen. Amen. We thank God. That's a really chilling testimony. Yes. Please, who else has a testimony to give? Nobody? Okay. Hallelujah. Um, I'd like you to thank God for my mommy's behalf. My mommy is 72, and she lives alone with my father. We try to get her help. As she says no. And apparently she was blind one eye. So she was seen with just one eye. She cooks herself. She does everything. It's, we had to even force someone to go to the house twice to clean up for them. Even that it was a fight. They don't want anybody. We say, okay, you your bathrooms and once in a while can clean that house for her. And she stands by the gas cook. My mommy is, she likes cooking, maybe because she gave birth to, we are sex and all, so she likes cooking. And when last week we were told that this thing is there for a long time, so right now she needs a surgery. 
we all became scared. So this woman has been walking in the house with, and my father says sometimes, you see her, they'll be watching TV, and she'll say, my mommy is called Mary. Mary this says, I can, I can see. But she is closer to the TV. So my father was very sad that he has been there with her all this while, and he didn't even notice that was what was going on. But by God's grace, three days ago, she went to do um, a surgery, and she's doing well. Yesterday, she said she can see, and it's only by the grace of God. Amen. Hello. Please, do we have another testimony? Other than that, I'll share mine, because I don't want to go and sit down without sharing my testimony. I'm sure um, everybody knows when I stand here about the fact that my business, I'm in the business of ice cream, and uh, my shop um, has closed down temporarily, whilst I'm waiting to move into the bigger one, yeah. which I'm very excited about. Um, but also, I came and stood here, and I talked about when I was closing the shop, I was a little worried in my spirit that how am I going to cope financially? Um, because really, ideally, you should wait till you've got into the shop before you close, you, yeah, so that it's just wisdom. But I still felt within my spirit at the time that that is what I wanted to do. So, um, again, I'm just recapping. I stood here and I said that I heard in my spirit when I was locking the shop that the Lord said that your bands are full. Amen. Yes. So, um, I was wondering, you know, I had money, but the money is going down. And you're thinking, hmm, the Lord said your bands are full. You keep confessing. I kept confessing my bands are full. Then something within me said, ah, but... You've got to connect your machines in the house, you know, um, because what have you got in your hands? You know, when you read the Bible, the Bible talks about the story of um, uh, the widow from Zarephath. And when, you know, you, you read that story where the widow has to feed um, Elijah and, uh, you know, she had some jars and that jar never ran out until um, the famine was over. So I said to myself, Father, my, what I have in my hands is my machines to do my ice cream. So I got somebody to come and connect the machines in the house. And hey, I have started getting my orders already. Yay! Yes, yesterday I did deliveries. Um, so I have money on me. I just want to affirm it that as I stand on this altar and as I declared and said that my, my bands will never run out or my bands are full um, and, and my money too would never run out until it's time for me to move into my next shop. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God for your life. Amen. <clears throat> I'll be fine. I just have drank some tea. But when I drink tea, I have to drink ice water for my system to be okay. I'm one of those people. So. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I wake up a bit early on Sundays. So sometimes my system is playing games. I don't know, I think when you cross a certain age, your body starts behaving a bit different. But we refuse that body in the name of Jesus. Amen. You don't say amen. When you get there, amen. I will remind you of it. Hallelujah. Amen. I used to wonder many years ago when I heard men in their 40s and they are struggling with fasting, I used to wonder what kind of laziness is this? Faster, you are saying you are feeling dizzy. Mm. Now, I am fasting. I don't feel dizzy because I'm used to it. But sometimes you wake up in the morning and your system is... Put your hands together for the birthday girl. The birthday girl. She just came in. Hallelujah. And today's bed, come forward, come forward. Let me give you honor. Sit in front as a birthday girl. Hallelujah. For those of you who are watching us live, this is Faith Live Church. I'm your senior pastor, Pastor Daniel Liao Enchi. Please remove all distractions from you as we get into God's word. I believe that God has a word for us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm trusting God to close very early today. 
and the days ahead, I want to start closing a bit early, earlier than the time. So I expect, except days where I'll do prophetic ministrations for people. But we are just about to get there. But I thank God for the life of the lady who just went through that experience. What a miracle. When I, I was sitting, I was looking, I was like, ah, I didn't see it on, on Friday. But I thank God. You know, uh, <laughs> that blade could have touched her eye, but it went below the eye. Our God is a faithful God. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen and amen. But then again, I also have an advice. Please, don't go to places that is too cheap. You will have problems. Hallelujah. <laughs> Uh, you know, sometimes in our bid to cut down on cost, sometimes because that place, you can't change Pastor Daniel. You will say the good, but the part that is in his head, he will say it. <laughs> but I pray for you that from today, God will increase your finances for you and your husband. God will increase your finances from today. We, we increase, I stand on behalf of God, I increase your income, the money that comes into your hands per month. Father, today, let the heavens open. I assign a new angel who would be bringing them finances. Every month, let their finances increase. That the angel could not stop it and allowed it to cut it. We ask for compensation for your daughter. We pray for divine compensation. Let it be released now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. One day I will teach you laws of the kingdom. There's a scripture in the Bible in Psalm 90 that Moses prayed and said, Lord, compensate us according to the number of years we have seen affliction. Let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish thou the work of our hands. So in the scripture, there's a place where God compensates us. The Bible says that, cast not your confidence which has great recompense of reward. So there's a recompensation for your reward. So as a believer, you can go to God and ask for compensation. <sighs> God help me. It's not part of my sermon, but, but I've just given you a secret. You can go to God and say, God, you said you have set your angels around me to keep lest my foot dash against a, 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 a stone. I thank you that you present me, but that the angel did not hold that thing and he caught me, Papa, I need compensation. Increase my per capita income. <laughs> I actually do it. You know why I have more money? It's because I look at the system and I go for compensation. The Bible says he determines the boundaries of their dwelling. This is free, free. I'm giving people free, free. He determines the boundaries of their dwelling. So if God put me in Ghana and I vote, and the person I vote for is, is not the one who won the election and is making mistakes, it cannot affect me because I made a choice. My choice was not chosen. So my father must give me compensatory reward for positioning me in the nation where others will vote for a different person and his policies and laws will be an advert effect on me. You see, you must have an understanding. See, do you know that the scripture says that, maybe let me just preach my sermon. Let me, should I just preach? Yeah, because I don't have too much time. You know, let me explain something to you. You see, lately I've been removing my spectacles. I'm supposed to wear a different one. I hear it's called progressive. I have the lens that they will put in the glass. I've had it for one year. It's in my wife's office at the optical place. To choose a spectacle that they will put the lens in is a tremendous situation. There are many of us who behave like Pastor Daniel. God has made available provisions that if you would just choose to live by, the results will be there. No. But you are not living by them and you are wondering why. Today I will give you an answer. Touch your neighbor and say, ask for today. 
Na answer so we go receive. I'm continuing on the series I started last week, Sunday, on the secret to supernatural financial blessings. The secret to supernatural financial blessings. And today I'm speaking on foundations of kingdom wealth. Foundations of kingdom wealth. There is a foundation that when it is in place, everything would work. Praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 5 to 10. And there it reads, get wisdom, get understanding. He says, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. So God is speaking, and what is he saying? get wisdom. He says, don't just get wisdom, get what? Understanding. In other words, stop saying mm, this is deep. Gain understanding of the wisdom that has been impacted onto you. It is not enough, child of God, for you. What did I do? Okay. It is not enough, child of God, for you to just have a knowledge of a truth. But you need to gain understanding of how it impacts your own life. Are we together in this place? The reason why a lot of people go to church but there's no transformation to their life is because they go to church because they want to just tick a box. I've attended service at school. Let me go. But when you begin to gain an understanding of a truth based on scripture, that truth is what will bring transformation to your life. When you are a woman and you attend church, what's going on there? Switch it, please. When you are a woman and you attend church, and all you do in church you show up, and when you go home, you are disrespectful to your husband. Or you're a man and you attend church, and you are disrespectful to your wife. Or you are not a good example to your fellow human being as a Christian. You are receiving wisdom from God's word, but that wisdom, you have not gained understanding that you must apply it to your life. How many of you like what I'm preaching? Is it a good sermon? And so it's important for all of us to live based on the truth of scripture. Praise the Lord. Very, very important. Someone say it's important. Hallelujah. Now, he says, forsake her not and she shall preserve thee. So when you gain understanding of a truth, that truth will preserve you. This is the scripture that made me love my wife. This scripture. That I don't have to forsake her. I have to love her. But it's not just for a woman. It's the principles of God's word. Hallelujah. He said, Love her and she shall keep thee. See. For those of you who are men, let me give you one simple counsel. You can never love a woman who will disrespect you. I repeat, I know what I'm saying. You can never love a woman who will disrespect you. What do I mean? How did Christ love? He died though. What did he do? So, <laughs> when you put a ring on a woman, I'm not talking about your girlfriend, that one there. Don't love a woman with your heart. Love her with your intestines. When she breaks apart, we can join the rest and you can continue. And when you are married, it's the value you add to it. I've never seen a player insult his coach. Add value. That's what it means by loving. You see, how did Christ love us? He chose us even what we're saying. Bring out the best in the person. In the way you speak to the person. In the way you, 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 you speak to the... I remember... It's okay, we are not going there. It's not marriage sermon, so let me not go there. But I remember when I, I got married to my wife at the beginning stage. 
He says something. She will jump. She will just go to the defensive. She says something. Ah! After one, two times, I went to God. Me, every time I go to God, you don't know what I'm telling you. I went to God. I said, Papa, the lady, you need to let me understand. What is the problem? Because everything I say, I, I go to the defensive. Then God showed me what to do. He gave me understanding. He says, it's because she's had a certain experience that once said, want to prove a point. And so when you go tell her, I'm not judging. Then say what you want to say. So I started learning. So when I come, I said, oh, it's not like I want to judge you. I just, I just want this relationship to be better than where we are. So can we please work on this thing? I started using the word, can we, can we, can we? And today, people see me, they say, Pastor Dan, you're a lucky woman. Your wife is very obedient. I say, you don't know. You have no idea. Obedient. I have paid the price by loving her. Remember my, my famous honeymoon story, right? I told you that my wife was shopping, and I said, oh, your father gave you $1,000 when we, we got married. You can use it to buy some more stuff that you want to come and sell. She said, no, no, no. That money, I use it for very important things. I have to preserve my I said, me, my money. It's for baller things. <laughs> but at that moment, I could not react because I, I knew that once I reacted, all the honeymoon experience would be off. And so I kept it to myself and acted maturely. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it makes sense. That's love. Someone say love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of my daughters says I should preach to you on love today. So I just want to satisfy my daughter that I preach on love. Someone say love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So understanding is key. See, you go into an office and your boss is, 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 is behaving some way. You don't leave the company. People are acting some way. saying, mm, you know, this is not good. There's, there's all forces of darkness. And we spiritualize it. No. Gain understanding of the culture of the place and see how best you can still prevail while managing the people. Because sometimes God's blessing that he brings our way, it doesn't come in right packages. There are many of us, we have walked away from relationships that could have been a blessing, but we do not have understanding. You look at her and say, hmm. If you are there, she's crazy. I don't like. Mm. Do you know that Bentley is more expensive than to Kia Sorento? And the price you pay for Bentley is not the same price you pay for Kia Sorento. Someone say yes and no. Is, it, is that the truth? Why is Bentley more expensive? Because it costed them more to put it together. If you want a certain caliber of, of people in your space, there is a price you must pay to get them into your space. If you want a certain level of impact in your life, there is a price you pay for it. And so don't wish for a Bentley blessing and desire to do the work of a tico. Are you getting me? You want to pay the price of buying Kia we can't do. And yet, you desire the comfort of a Bentley. You are delusional. Everybody in this life, the quality of your life, you must be willing to pay the price. And you need understanding. This is where I'm going. I must be willing to pay this price. Look at Aunt Elizabeth. It's more than 50. Oh, you are 50. I don't even know your age. You are 59. Hey! Wow. Someone, huh? see, somebody is watching, he's like, what? You know why? This woman takes care of herself. She watches what she eats. He says, I eat everything, but moderately. Moderately. You too. <laughs> Pastor Daniel, stay with the word. Someone say wisdom. Someone say wisdom. And so understanding is key if you want to succeed in life. Someone say understanding is key. Listen to me, there are many of us, we begin businesses and then all of a sudden we are buying cars. I'm the general overseer, I must drive a Land Cruiser Prado. What have you general over to see? You know, as a CEO, the first money that came into the business, you know, I need a car because branding is important. You lack understanding. You lack 
you understand me. God has favored me, but I won't lie. I am one of the most young guys who is blessed. <laughs> the blessing is not in the car. I can afford any car I want to buy. But is that important? No. Is that important? No. There are ma- 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 many, many things that are more important than that one. And so I'm doing the things that are important. Then when the time is ripe, whatever I want to get, I mean, I go get. The other day, one of the young guys came to my site. He was driving a 4 by 4 car. He came, <laughs> got to my construction site. He looked at the building. He looked at the swimming pool. Then his friend said, you use yours to buy a car. He has used this to buy cement and block. Choose your poison. Church, listen to me. There's one thing none of us have control over. It's called time. What you do with your time now, based on your understanding of the kind of future you desire, that is what will play out in the next five years of your life. Which, whoever you marry, see, I tell everybody, you can marry anybody in this life. It depends on your willingness to pay the price for the person. Your wife's level of education does not matter. Her income does not matter whether you have joy in your home or not. It's not age that we use to marry. It's wisdom and understanding. The Bible says, husband, dwell with your wife according to understanding. Where you understand how to manage the woman, she will be singing for you. One of my friends taught me. He says, your pay is how much? 480. How much is your wife's salary? I said, 1,002. He says, sir, You won't have problem in your marriage. My, my, somebody had told me that I wanted somebody to introduce him to so one of those corporate bankers. The lady's office, the money that people chop there is serious matter. So I said, sister, introduce me to one. He said, you are an Ashanti man. Your ego will disturb you. You can't marry. You can't marry one. Because they are pay. It can pay you your salary. It can pay you for years. <laughs> But a friend gave me understanding. He said, there are some things you can buy. There are some things your wife can buy. But those ones, your salary can buy. I said, what? He says, every woman, every month, they go to a certain cycle. Those things that they will use for, for their preservation, buy, is cheap. I said, sir. He says, look for your wife's lingerie and things. It's not expensive. It's cheap. Buy those ones. Let your wife know that those are the things you provide. As long as you are providing those things, you are contributing to her life. The day it gets finished, when you are not there, she will miss you. He says, your light bill, pay. Your water bill, pay. He says, save money. If it's not enough to pay for your rent, then you can ask your wife for some. He says, if you do these things based on the, your salary, your wife will respect you and money will not be a problem. I had gained understanding. I did the exact thing. My wife, respect, honor, dignity. I work with Lady Irene and everything is fine. And God started blessing me because it's wisdom. Someone say wisdom. I didn't come to, I came to talk about finance. What is this? Please, is it okay? Can I move on? Is it because of the... Uh, Valentine, that's why the spirit is in this house. We are moving on. Someone say, we are moving on. It's okay, it's okay. But I've taught the men some secret. Have I taught you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's all learn. Let's all what? Learn. Find something about your partner and by. And the women too. I'm not working. You are working. I'm not working. Don't they give you money to go to market? Are you not working? By wisdom, a house is built. By understanding all the treasures thereof are put in place. Another time when I preach on marriage, I will go there and show the women your own. But I've given you a clue. You should know what to do. You see, we need to understand in Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22, the Bible says, The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rage, and he adds no sorrow with it. Praise the Lord. You see, so when God says that wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding, what God is saying is that when I tell you to do something, I'm not, I, I, I'm not asking you to do something that is beyond you. Someone say, get understanding. Hallelujah. And understand that it is God's blessing that is making you rich. 
It is not the scheming. It is not the stealing. Is that I don't steal. Oh. I am blessed. <laughs> I am. I have to desire the thing. It will come. I'm telling you. Somebody has just gone to show me acres of land for this church. When you see the acre, you open your mouth. I didn't say one acre. I didn't say five acre. I didn't say ten acre. Another time we'll continue. Let me continue. Uzzah chapter 4, verse number 6. He says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You see, because we do not know what to do, the Bible says we are destroyed, not lack of demons, attack, and defense. It's not because we are lacking defense. We have spiritualized everything, but the Bible is telling us the reason why the enemy has inroads in your life is because you lack knowledge. The room is quiet until it is. Do you know the same tomatoes and pepper and onion that you have in your house? If a chef stands behind it, he can create a, a meal from it and sell it for 390 Ghana cities. The difference between you and the person is that he has a level of knowledge you don't have. On my birthday, somebody had the privilege for somebody to go and pay for my food. Food, though. What did the person pay for me? Food. Somebody wanted to pay for my food. To go to a place to go and eat. I won't advertise for them. Sister, when we went, my wife ordered for um, snail. Three. How many? How many? They put the snail, the snail on three like this and put some stew or sauce around it. <laughs> when we finished, I went to check the snail cost. It was 300 and something. Come here, Three hundred. And what me and son? And what? And what? It is not the, it is the knowledge on how to plate. That's what you are paying. The plating, the taste of the wow, that, that a person will gain an understanding that, that you can set it in a certain way and put some stew around it and put it in a room and put air conditioning is what you are paying for. It's understanding. So, position your life in a way that God can use to bless you. God will not bless you beyond a vacuum. God will use what he's giving you by your understanding of what is in your hands. That is what will produce the results for you. I hope I'm not insulting you. I'm, I'm preaching a, a, a decent sermon. So now I want to be a very gentle man of God here. I'm learning. Praise the Lord. Now look at it. Let's look at Hosea 4 verse 6. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. He says you have rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forsaken the law of thy God. So it means that there are certain laws of God you don't forsake. You don't reject that knowledge. But what do we do? We always reject the knowledge of God. Oh this one is Old Testament. This one. So people are just living anyhow. I shared with my church workers that somebody in this church just listened to my sermon. I, I preached and I said people should not fornicate. Just live right. If a man wants to marry you and he wants to kiss you the first time, kiss him heavy. Do what? Kiss him heavy. You see, kissing is not a sin. It is what it will lead you to. So we prevent it. I said, kiss him heavy. Oh. They asked him a question. What is this? He said, oh, you know I love you. He said, if you love me, marry me. He says, so you are half time. Give me some time. He says, then, then we we'll wait. Because it is more difficult to pay for a food that you finish eating. Is it true? How many of you know it's the, the most painful thing is to finish eating before you pay? You know why when you go to a restaurant, we pay? Because we are afraid they will beat us. They won't let you go. If you know you, you can go scot free, how many of you will eat food and pay? Show me by hand in this room. Nobody. So my daughter will not let the guy eat. The guy will come and visit my daughter from wherever the, the guy will come. 
My daughter said, you are not sleeping in my room. You sleep in a guest house. She said, but we are mine. She said, mm, sleep in a guest house. We will meet to talk. I will cook food for you to eat. But this is my body. My body ain't now. God, I go give her more. So he didn't let the boy. Oh. My daughter will later on find out. The relationship didn't work. They are married, you know. They had a wedding date. The marriage did not come on. I think a few weeks to the wedding, the guy was misgiving too much. The lady called it, you know. We later on found out that apparently the guy had HIV AIDS. Number one. And then number, if I say the second part, we are best show. Hmm. I'll keep that one. Then the guy died. So my daughter would have married an HIV patient. And that, that is not even the painful part. The other one, make out, we have to the mom in Kibuai. We running stomach. If the daughter had not obeyed the principles of scripture, she would have gotten herself involved in a man who has HIV AIDS. She would have been a widow carrying HIV. With all their body, nobody can touch because you have become an accustomed. See, obeying the law of God is for your own preservation. It's for your own. You see, listen, let me say something. I'm your pastor, but I'm an honest pastor. Me too, I have feelings so. I see some sisters I watch two times. Sometimes I even go on to go back and watch a third. I am also tempted. But I know if I violate the scripture, the Bible says if you break the head, a serpent will bite you. That you have feelings does not mean you should act on it. My problem has not been women until recently. Women, I see them as trees. But lately, when I'm there, my body is feeling... Hmm. Because it's natural. Are you getting me? My challenge was alcohol. Because in my family, there are two demons. Womanizing or alcoholism. When I got to know at the beginning, I fought the womanizing one. I kept telling myself, I don't like women. I don't like women. I don't like women. Then for some time, I started saying, I'm looking for a girl. I'm looking. My wife rebuked me. I would not listen. You know, I'm looking for a girl who take me. As if I'm joking. All of a sudden, the thing is beginning to do me. Look for a woman. Look for a woman. Church, listen to me. The Bible says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. The things we say, it has effect on us. And so let us be mindful because when you violate the law of God, it will have effect on your life. Am I, am, I, am I a good man of God to tell you the truth? Yeah. Pastors are not angels. So don't go and be dancing and showing pastor your, priv- your cleavage. God, we are sorry. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do it. Brother, none of us is an angel. None of us. Not even the Pope. Don't go and try the Pope. He will fall down. Let me show you something. He says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I also reject thee. That thou shouldest be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. So when I live by God's law, it has effect on my children. Now, continue. I was telling my wife this one. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore, will I change their glory into shame. The difficulty is that whenever God starts blessing us, we change. When a little blessing, small money that Saka coming to us, you know, man of God, the, the tight is too much. Oh, Pastor Dan is rich. What does he need my money for? I mean, you violate the law. The church crowd, you know, they just waste money. They carry money and go to 31st, and the Pastor Dan will come. The impudence of a dying cockroach. There is mentioning the money he spent at 31st. Waste of money, waste, waste, waste. Continue. Because now you are seeing points. You have not even gotten into dollars yet. 
and pound sterling. The only money currency with a surname. Are there. As they increased, they forgot about God. I pray that when God begins to bless you, you will not forget about God. A story is said of J.C. Penny. J.C. Penny. American billionaire. When his mother had taught him how to give his tithe, one tenth, when he started getting blessed and the monies were coming in millions, he was now struggling to pay tithe. So he went to God and said, this scripture is the Old Testament. Can I? When he stopped, everything started going down. When everything started going down, he cried to God. Then God said, you have a covenant with me. Once you have stopped the covenant, I am not obligated to keep my part of the covenant. See, if your husband is giving you problems, you be faithful to your part. Leave the rest to God. As long as you are in the covenant and submitting to your husband, or you are loving your wife, although she's a mad person, do your part. God has a way. I'll tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. I know of a couple. God had just started blessing them. They owned a business. Then the woman started accusing the guy of this, 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 this. Then the guy said, bring the evidence. Do not, so I want to leave. Hey! Pastors came in. So the word of God says, even, even if your husband has misbehaved, forgive. He, no, 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 no. Get out of my house. Get. So the man was speaking to me. I said, sir, honor God according to his word and love your wife. He went to God. He said, God, I will love my wife. Now she says she doesn't want the marriage. God said, don't do anything. Stay, stay, stay. Then after the man has stayed for a while, when the woman filed the divorce paper and they started going to court, God opened the heavens over the guy's life. The guy said, is the building you want? Keep. The building was small. In two years, God has given the guy a bigger place than the one he walked away from. God has given more money, more access, more influence, more honor. You see, when you do your part, there is a God who is a God of covenant. When he sees your, you playing your role, he has a way of compensating you. And my prayer for you today is that you be a child that will live by covenant. You will live by the law of God and that you allow God to be God in your life. Someone say, God will be God in my life. How many of you like what I'm preaching? Amen? Now, now look at the scripture. He says, hmm. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore, will I change their glory into shame. My prayer is that God will not change your glory into shame. It will not happen to you. Somebody say amen. amen. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 16. The Bible says, The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. He says that he that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. God says, when you wander out of the way of understanding and you choose pleasure over me, you, Pastor Mbeh Mobo, we in Ghana, a lot of financial institutions started rising up in this nation. How many of you were here? It was just rising up, giddy, 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 all of a sudden. One calamity after the other. You know why? A lot of the guys started becoming big boys. It was pleasure. They were, they were becoming big boys, having, I heard, some of them, not all of them. So they were having orgies. They were having all kinds of rubbish parties and engagements and flying here with this girl. Not their wives, though. This girl and that girl, lovers of pleasure, because now they have become big boys because money was coming. Where are they? Most of them, where are they? They are lost. I pray that you will gain understanding. That no matter how God blesses you, you will stay humble. You will stay humble. You will still live by the word of God. God money can mess you up. I remember one guy told his wife, you, I pity you. I'm the most powerful man in Ghana. I know the most powerful man in Ghana. Where is he? You lack understanding. You will remain in the congregation. Of the, things will be bad for you. I pray that that will not be our testimony in this church. Amen. Amen. 
And so in Luke chapter 8, verse number 3 to 8, Jesus speaking says, A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowl of the air devoted, and some fell upon the rock, and as soon as it, was, it sprang up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it, and choked it, and others fell on the good ground. Do you see that the sower was very focused? He kept moving and sowing. Some were falling in wrong places, but he would not stop. He kept sowing. Child of God, don't stop sowing. Don't stop doing the right things that is required of you. Don't stop. I said what? Don't stop. Don't stop doing right. Don't stop living right. Don't stop living in holiness. Don't stop. Be focused on the right things. You want results? Focus on your goal. There will be distractions. There will be tones. There will be thistles. But focus and pursue that vision that God has set for you. You want to be successful financially? Focus is the secret. Consistency is the attitude. I am consistent. Sir, I will show up. I may fail today, I will show up. I may fail tomorrow, I will keep showing up. Because if you believe in anything, it shall be tested. Whatever you believe in, what will happen? It shall be tested. Do the right things. Ah. Look at it. He says, And others fell on the good ground and sprang up and bore fruit a hundredfold. The guy will not stop. The ones that fell on good ground, he bare how many fold? A hundredfold of what? Of what he sold. Not what he did not sow. What you don't sow, you can't reap. Sir, sow respect for your husband. It's just a matter of time. The Holy Ghost will convict him one of these days. Sow respect in terms of setting parameters and boundaries by which you will live your life by. Every one of you, you will be tested like Pastor Daniel sometimes gets tested. The temptation is there. But acknowledge it, but don't, don't act on it. Acknowledge it, don't Act on it. Is, is, is it a good sermon and preaching? You don't, you don't like this. You want me to preach, I receive it for you. Okay, receive it. Please let me say this. I feel like saying this. <laughs> Discipline is not a gift of the spirit. It's a decision a man makes for his own life. Discipline is what? It's not a gift of the spirit. To discipline yourself to see things through, it is not a gift of the spirit. It is a decision you make. This thing, I will see to it that it gets done. I will see to it that it gets done. It's not a gift of the Spirit. Why is Sister Abigail? Why is she not in the room? Is she here? She's not here. Uh, I've seen her. I could not see you. Hallelujah. Can I continue? Look at how Jesus said, he says, and when he has said these things, he cried. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Let him, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20 to 21. He says, and though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. But thy eyes shall see thy teachers, and thy ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is is the way. Walk ye in it. And when ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left hand. So God is saying, even if I bring affliction to you, the way out is that I will not take your teachers away from you. Who is speaking to you? The whole week, which voice are you listening to? Which voice are you listening to? Which voice? Who is your teacher? Is it Pastor Daniel or it's not? Some of you, it is not. You just, you just come and sit here. No matter what I preach, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I remember many years ago, Dr. Tabel was teaching on goal setting. And then I was listening to it on radio. At, they had played it in my house because my family members are very close to the church. And so I was not going to ICGC. No, I'd, I was actually going to ICGC. <laughs> uh, Dr. Tabel was preaching on goal setting, set goals for yourself. You know what I said in the, in the trotro? I remember it was around Ubeche Bilamte circle going home. I heard I said, on the way, did you have men at the end of the day? And I was poor. But excuse my language. 
my ignorance was making me speak rubbish things. If you don't set a goal for your life, how can you succeed? But there are many of you are like, hmm, is it done? With me. <laughs> you see, your teacher is supposed to introduce you to God and his order of doing things so that you will follow. Your teacher, he teaches you the word. He explains the scriptures and, and makes it simple so that you can live by it. I pray that may you find your teachers. You see, but what does your teacher teach you? He teaches you to first give your life to God. First do what? Give your life to God. You see, I was speaking to a, a very successful man who's, who's, who's about to do some major things. He said to me, the reason why I've gone to, he's been believing God for 10 years for a project. How many years? He says, when I began, I did not. He says, one day I woke up in London and I saw a number written. And then I heard in my spirit the area of work that if I pursue, I'll be able to make that millions. He says, so I, I, I decided to go into it. This person is a lawyer. The area has nothing to do with law. But wisdom made him not to leave his law firm. He was working alongside us is doing. It's taking him 10 years. That goal is just about to manifest. Do you have the discipline to see through a vision for 10 years? Do you? Then he said to me, I have come to understand that if God had given me this wealth before this time, it would have destroyed me. I asked him why. He says, because I came into a certain money. He says, when I got those millions, the number of people that started calling me, it, it, it was too much. It's not only business people who call you. Girls who call you. Yeah. I was speaking to you. I, I, I deal by the special grace of God. God has showed me mercy. I pray for a lot of wealthy people who own banks and stuff like that. That's my grace. I pray for you. God will give you a bank. But you have to do the work. It's not me. It's a grace I have. One of them said to me, women, come to me. They want to throw themselves at me. Use me. I'm available. So you too, jolly, 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 jolly. He said, use me. I'm going to use. No. Discipline. Someone say discipline. So the man said to me, you first have to give yourself to God. You have to submit yourself. And know that what God is bringing into your hands is not just for you. It's not just for who? For you. A prayer for you is that you would know that your life is not just for you. There are many people that are looking up to you. This life is bigger than your, your enjoyment. And so before you go and lie down with that lady or that man, understand your life's value is so much that many destinies are connected to it. And so you cannot just live your life anyhow. People don't like me preaching on holiness, but whatever I do, we'll go there. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18 says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get well. In other words, when you submit yourself to God, you recognize that whatever you have, it is God that gave you. He said that he may establish his covenant which he swore unto thy fathers as it is this day. So, mommy, whatever wealth you have in your hand, whatever wisdom, whatever blessing is given you, it was God who gave it to you in the first place. Recognize his place. Some of you, you don't even pay tight. You don't even give a God offering. God has been blessing you, yet you keep giving 20 CDs as offering. It's a dishonor unto God. And I'll show you in the Bible. I'll show you in the Bible. I'll show you today. God says, I have a covenant with you. Someone say covenant. He says what? But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get what? Wealth. That he may establish what? His covenant. It is his covenant. Who does the establishment of the covenant? God. It's not you. Please listen to me. God doesn't need your money. But you need him to take it from you so that he will establish his covenant with you. 
God is in heaven. Does he need your money? Do you know who uses the money? Me. So, Pastor, what do you use the money for? I'm glad you asked. Today I will tell you. One, when you give money to God, the Bible says, on earth men receive the tithe, but in heaven God receives it. So, when you give me the money, I use the money for the work of God. God tells me what to do. I choose what is called the work of God. I called a church member who has not been coming to church for some time now. And I said, ah, you've not been coming to church. Where are you? He says, oh, you know, I'm going through some financial struggles. So, I don't have money. That's it. So, I said, so I don't have money to come to church. I said, okay. Where's your house? So, the person told me the house. I said, okay. Then I felt like I should ask you a question. So, do you go to the office? He said, oh, yeah. You know, I go to the office. <laughs> I said, okay, so you have money Monday to Friday. You get transport to go to work. But you don't have transport to come and lift up hands to thank God. I just felt in my heart, don't send them money. Because I was going to send more. I was going to, that's what I use your money for. I'm always sending to people. Mm -hmm. I felt like, ah. You can't come to God and lift up hands. You see, me and Mano, but God, he sees what you prioritize. My question, what have you been prioritizing? If you say, if I say I love you, and I fly from America to Ghana, I say I love you, and you have time for everything, but you give me an excuse, oh, I don't have money to come and see you. But every day you are going somewhere. Whatever I brought to you, will I give it to you? Talk to me somebody. Will I give it to you? So why do we think that God, he will live, look at how many millions of people. He will live and come and be with you. And yet, even showing up to lift up holy hands, you always come to church after praise and worship. And you expect him to prioritize you above every other thing. You are dishonoring him. And yet you want him to bless you financially. Do you know how you get money? It's by favor. God will, will, will place upon somebody's heart to favor you. God will place upon somebody's heart to buy from you. God will place upon somebody's heart to employ you, to open a door for you, to give you access. It is God who, who speaks to the heart of men. My daughter, what's her name? Pearl. Last time I went to her house, she was not looking beautiful at all. I said, sister, you are becoming lean. He says, I am tired. I said, why? You remember that God asked her to give him a money. And that was the last money and it did not make sense at the time. How many of you remember that story that she shared in church? Then she gave her tight. Although that month she gave more than what, she was ex uh, uh, what came, but she honored God. And then she gave for, I think I raised a thousand CD seed and the devil was speaking to her that why are you going to do it? After all, God has not kept his part. And she gave. She says from 1st December. Is it 1st December? First, when? I don't want to lie. Is it 1st December? From 1st December. Every day she's booked. Well, I don't know if last week. Uh, is it still booked? Are you still booked? Till now. Huh? You did three people yesterday. Oh yeah, you did here? You did here, you did do. Before this time, that was not what was prevailing in her life. Once she honored and prioritized God first. Ha! Ah, every day she's booked. Do you know the money? I've not chopped some, but do you know the money? She's so booked that, see, she looks extremely, extremely tired. She's booked Monday to Sunday. Madam, help me. Is, is she the only person who knows how to do hair? Hmm? Why is it that all of a sudden there's a light on her and everybody's going and she's doing three? Meanwhile, you, only one, are not getting for a whole week. Homer. The difference between you and her is that one person is acting based on their scriptural principles and God is on her. See, God wants to do so much for all of us, but most of the time, we are not ready for him. See, if you will be a Christian, be a Christian. If you will not, forget about it. Go and serve idols. It will help you. 
Because God is in a covenant. What is the covenant? Genesis 8.22. When Noah had given a sacrifice unto God, there was nothing on earth. He came out of the ship and then he gave God an offering. And God smelled it. Anytime you sacrifice unto God, he smells. What sacrifice are you giving to God? Genesis 8.22. Then God said, while the earth remained, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. So every one of us, there will be a day season and a night season. Every one of us. See, the seed comes before the harvest. What seed are you planting for God? What seed, sister? What seed? I'm going to ask you, if you, I'm going to ask you a question. It's a direct question I'm asking you. Why should God give you a better job than where you are now? What have you done for God that God should look at it and say, if calamity will befall everybody in your organization minus you, what can you stand on and say, God, based on this sacrifice, based on this thing I've sacrificed for you, that what can, are you getting me? When I was bathing, thoughts were coming to my mind. That's why I'm asking that. Is there something you've done for God for which God will look at that sacrifice and say, because of this, my son be promoted. Get 10 cities. Get 30 cities. Is there, is there, is there a price you paid for your faith? So why do I need this covenant, man of God? Psalm 37, verse 18 to 19. Why do I need this covenant? He said, the Lord knoweth the days of the upright. Now look at this scripture. <laughs> the Lord knoweth the days of the upright. And their inheritance shall be forever. Next verse. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. So... When I read this scripture this dawn, what came into my heart is this. The Lord knows the days of the upright. God knows you. He knows your days. He knows what you need. He says that, look at it. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. So every one of us, evil times will come our way, one way or the other. He says, God knows it. He says, our inheritance, they shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil times. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. He says that there will be days of lack. That is why you must be in covenant with me. Because I know your days. When you're in covenant with me, I make provision for those days. So that when those days come, as for you, you'll be satisfied. What I'm preaching, is it a good sermon? The way the room is very quiet, I'm afraid. When I saw the scripture, this door, I was like, God, help me. Oh. Help me. For all of us. There will be all sorts of days. But those days will not prevail over you. It will not overwhelm you. That's why the scripture says, when you go through the fire, I will be with you. And through the waters, it shall not overwhelm you. So it is possible. Like our sister. It was days of evil. But she has come for Friday prayer service. And made declarations. Misfortune will not befall us. So she did not lose her eye. The evil day, but it will not have that kind of effect. What will kill her death? She may give you a scratch, it will not kill you. Praise the Lord. So how reliable is this covenant, man of God? How reliable is this covenant? A few minutes to close now. Jeremiah 33 verse 20 says, that says the Lord, if you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night and that <laughs> there, shall be no, there shall not be day nor night in their season, then may also my covenant be broken with David my servant. God is saying, if you serve me, you have to change the ordinances of heaven for my covenant with you to be. That is how reliable the covenant is. Sister, anytime you wake up and you see the sun, Remember, God's covenant concerning your life is in force. Amen. God's covenant is what? It's in force. That's why nothing moves me. I don't fear anybody. You cannot make me. I am made by God. It's God who opens. As long as I am faithful to the covenant, 
nothing can stop my destiny. All these prayers we are praying, binding the devil, sometimes it's God who, who you are fighting against. You are praying rubbish prayers. Live by the covenant dictates and things will work. If you are faithful to another man, God will give you your own. My wife worked for somebody for 10 years. When she went, she went to open the third branch. By the time she was leaving, she had 11 branches. She was opening the 12th branch. They own a, a hospital in addition. I never made it once do locum. Do you know locum? That's where the doctors make money. You go and do side jobs. Side. Once! Never made it. I said, you will not do that in my house. We will be honest to the woman. You are faithful. She's giving you access to her work. Work. Give her 100% the best. She started Blackwood. This is the second year. Yeah. We just ended the first year, I think November or December. Second year. We have two branches. This year we are opening a third branch. Maybe a fourth. I don't know. I don't know. The second branch is in East Legon. Two rooms. Big rooms. Maybe it's like the whole of this room. A bit bigger. I need to check and be sure. But yeah, I think it's almost like, like the whole of this room. That's the second branch. Second, we are doing without struggle or stress. Faithful to another man. The covenant is activated. We enjoy it. Will you, will you, will, see, the foundation of kingdom wealth is living by the covenant. Someone say, I will live by the covenant. You see, please understand that God's covenant covers all of us. It covers who? All of us. Praise the Lord. He says, he, 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 Revelation chapter 5 verse 10. And he has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. What did he say when I read Jeremiah chapter 30 verse number 21? What does he say? He says, then may also my covenant be broken with David my servant. That he should not have a son to reign upon his throne. And will deliver the priests, my ministers. Are you getting it? So every one of us is a priest. We've been made priests and kings unto God. So the covenant is for everybody in this room. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 16 to 18. Quickly. He says, For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife, wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation, who have fled for refuge, to lay hold upon the hope and before us. The hope set before us. He says that we, there's a covenant we have with God. We must lay hold on this hope. So whatever you do, do it in hopes that God is a faithful God and he will keep his covenant. I give to this church all the time. For the work of God I'm giving. I get money, I give. I get, I give. I get, I give. I get, I give. The more I give, the more I gain. I remember the first time we did the 31st, when we closed. Aunt Elizabeth brought me a prophetic word. Aunt Elizabeth said, God said I should tell you. Because of what you have done for me, and you have not withheld anything from me, your money, your personal money, and anything for me, but you have honored me this day, and have brought souls to me, I will build your house. Last year, without sweat, thank you for the last word. Last year, I got too much money. I'll travel a few days, $10,000, $15,000, this. I was in Ghana, somebody walked to me, grab, 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 and gave me $50,000 cash. Free money. All in one year. And that was not all. The rest came. But if I add some, you be too. So let's leave it here. So, 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 as I'm here, is there somebody who have delayed me? I bought everything. Everything is there. Even paint. I bought paint. Paint for the house is bought. Everything is bought. I'm just waiting for artisans to be doing their work. As they are doing, my air condition is centralized. It's not this one that is standing there. No. Free money came. I didn't steal. I honored God first. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all the things everybody is chasing after will follow. You get small money, you are not getting, even your bonus, you don't want to honor God with it. <gasps> Why? See, you know I'm using a bag, a brown bag, beautiful leather bag, right? 
there. I'm using the back, enjoying my back. I was saying, uh, a doctor came to see my wife. I said, ah, I know your husband loves bags. I bought a bag in America. I bought more than one. When I got here, I remembered that I, I can give the bag to Pastor Dan. <laughs> the one you are praying for. I'm not praying. I'm focused on God. He's bringing it to me for free. You don't like this one. Which one do you like? Please, put it for me. Ah, is it, it's okay. Are you getting me? Seek first the kingdom. Choose to honor God with your own life. Trust him absolutely for everything. And the things people are laboring for, it will come to you. Someone say it will come to me. You see, he says, I need to explain something to you. In Genesis chapter 8, verse 21 to 22, the Bible says, And the Lord smelled a sweet savour. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore every living thing as I have done. While the earth remaineth seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. You see, Noah's offering provoke God to smell. Anytime you give God an offering, God will smell it. But what offering do you give to God? What offering do we, we give to him? We treat God like he's a trash. You see, look at it. Hmm. The scripture says, in 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6 to 8, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly, shall reap also sparingly. He which soweth bountifully, shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposes in his heart. Now, I'm, I'm going to teach you something. That's, that's why I need to close quickly. But I want to teach you this. Every man according as he has purposed in that. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. Dot. Stop. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Look at it. Look at it. He brings this statement after and God is able to make all grace. So when you come cheerfully to give unto God as an act of worship and honor, he says that God is able. He has so much grace that whatever you need for which you have sacrificed unto him, he knows how to sort it out for you. He says he's able to make all grace. All kinds of grace can work for you. All kinds of grace. Sometimes the grace will be you open a door for you to work and get money. For others, you can touch somebody's heart to give you money. For others, it will be like, man, a person will come to buy spectacles for my wife and will remember that he has bought it. Does it make, well, does it make sense? All grace. Church, when we started this church, I kept telling you, I said, I'm doing this thing for God. Please do some more. Because a time will come, God will so bless me that you'll be envious. Did I say or I didn't say? Get ready. The day I'll pack my Bentley in front here. It will be a Bentley blessing. So you are so far back. They don't preach salvation. What is salvation to a poor person? Is it not that God will bless the person? I mean, you remember. What is salvation to a man who doesn't have a car? Am I not going to declare that I'll get a Bentley? You want me to say I'll get Kia? If I can get Kia, I can get Bentley. Okay, let's continue. You see, no one prospers in the kingdom without being a giver. No one. Sister, what did I say? No one prospers in this kingdom without being a giver. Hmm. The scripture says in Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 to 8, And be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that Shall he so when you sow forgiveness, when you sow honor, when you sow respect, when you sow hard work and diligence and commitment, you will reap it. A lot of us, we are lazy. I introduced uh, Lillian and said, this lady sows very well. Somebody tried a work. Somebody tried a work. If it gets into her head, 
and her laziness causes her to sleep at the time she has to wear. After a while, she will eat the sleep. Do you know the sleep is called poverty? The scripture says a little sleep, a little folding of hands. Poverty will catch you like a thief. Some of us, we are lazy. We give excuses, reasons why. Stop it. I said, nobody will raise your children for you if you don't raise them yourself. God is not mock. Whatsoever a man sows, if you sow negligence. I, I, I heard a story last week. I think last week or last two weeks. Last week. That a woman's child was four years old. The child was bathing herself. A man molested the lady. The lady did not know that the child was molested. By the time they took the child to the hospital, it was worse. The child died. Now the woman was crying. I said they should have slapped the woman. 13 slap. What, 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 kind, of, what kind of negligence is this one? Four years old, your child should be, what are you doing? Lazy. Four years old, your child should bow. You see, some of us, we need these children. You are not getting, you have gotten, you are misbehaving. God will ask you one day, the way you are treating these children that God has brought to you, that you are not taking care of them, being diligent with them. When you go to heaven, you will make it to heaven. But beatings are bad, you know. No, sometimes you have to be honest with you. So, so, so my heart, I'm like, Charlie, God. And he knows. So we leave him to have everything. He said, for he that sweat to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. If everything is to your body, you will reap it. You sow to the flesh. All decisions you are making is for you, 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 you. You will reap it. You will reap it. If you sow to God, you, the decisions you are making is it will honor God. My husband, to use your, your husband, he says, my son, my, my husband, whatever his name, he, he's misbehaving, but God says I should submit to him. So I will still submit, although he's, he's, he's being, I don't like insulting the men in the church, you know, you know that, because we have to honor him, honor his, he's, he's being something, something, something like that. As you do it, the Lord, who is the covenant executor, is watching your attitude. He's watching your, your lifestyle. He will change it. The other day, my daughter, one of my daughters said to me, God told me to be thanking my husband. I said, thank him how? He, he said, God, thank him. He said, be thanking him. You just thank him. Thank him. The husband has misbehaved. Instead of her giving to you, he said, thank your husband. I said, well, thank you for this. Thank you for this. Thank you. He says, all of that, I felt, I felt peace. When I slept, I slept well. You can't sleep well because you have held bitterness in your heart. And God says we should not let the sun go down the bitterness. Is everybody getting something? You see, the beauty of the covenant is that we can start from where we are. Because God's commandments are not grievous. He said to Abraham, he says that, he says that, Look from the place where thou art, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For the land which thou seest, to thee will I give and to thy seed forever. So, whatever it is, you start from where you are. Even if it is Titan, God will not judge you based on what you did not do in the past. He will judge you based on what you don't do from today, now that you know the word. Please, do you, you, you get it? He, start from where you are. No matter how small it is, Start. Are you getting me? Don't say, oh, what is 20 cities? Be faithful. As God increase it, increase it. Uh, God, God, increase how much you give to God on a weekly basis. Increase it. According, how does God want you to give? Look, look at the scripture. <laughs> uh, which one Christ should I quote? Uh, you see, how should you give? Look at it. 2 Corinthians 8, 12. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man has and not according to that which he has not. Look at me, everybody. Look at the scripture. If there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man has. So God is saying, don't go and steal and give it to me. First, you must give me what you have, not what you don't have. Don't go and steal. I remember one day I wanted to do, go and steal some money. I got some waste and means money I wanted. God told me, I hate robbery for bent of it. You have not paid your workers. You are giving big money to God. It is not scripture. 
He says, give according to what you have. People don't like me. You don't like me, but I don't care. You don't like me. See, that is down for no fault. You know, in Job chapter 8 verse 7 says, Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end shall be, shall greatly increase. You see, it's faithfulness in little things that brings a greater harvest. It's what? It's faithfulness in what? Ah. Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 7, 17. It says, Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he has given thee. So God judges you according to his blessing. And a lot of you know that I have money, right? Mm. Yes. You know, I, you know, God has blessed me. You know that if I call you and say, you know, God has blessed me if you are, so take 20 CDs, you won't be happy. You know you won't be happy. Why? Because you know that I have more than that. Amen? Amen. If I, 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 I come right now and I'm like, oh, no, oh, I want to bless you. I want to bless you. So I'll see you on Sunday, okay? You have expectation because Pastor Andy, <laughs> cash move, a day in pocket. Then I come and I give you 50 CDs. You know my level. Will you be happy? So God says that. When it comes to me and you, when you come to give me, every man shall give. Can we all read it? Every man shall give as he is. According to the, of the, thy God, which he has giving thee. So God is saying, every man shall give as he's able. He puts a comma. He says that when I say able, it doesn't mean you choose what you want to give. You must give me in proportion to the blessing that I, almighty God, I have blessed you. Give in proportion to what I have blessed you. You understand me? He says that, that which he has given thee. So you, God is not asking you to give him what you don't have. He is saying, according to my blessing, Hmm? Well, according to my Mildred, according to this is where we, we, we get it wrong. Sister, how much offering were you giving every Sunday last year? Did God increase it? Have they increased your salary in the office? Do you know you are still paying the old tithe you paid last year? They say, oh no, that one is bonuses. Is it not a blessing that God has brought? Hmm. Hmm. Come to Exodus 35 verse 5. He says, Take you from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it. An offering of the Lord. Gold and silver and brass. God says we should do what? He says we must give anybody who has a willing heart. He means that if you are not willing, don't give. Don't, don't. See, let me say something in this church. Everybody look at me. We don't need you to give your tithe and your offering. If you are doing it grudgingly, stop. Because God, he has taught me in Faith Life Church, he can take care of his own. The car I drove that I dash, I didn't buy. My wife's car, she didn't buy. The house that we are building, the monies that have been coming to me, we didn't. We... If I tell you how much dollars has gone out of my hands from my birthday till today, you open your mouth. If I tell you how much dollars has moved from me and gone out. I'm not saying to brag. I didn't have it before we entered into the year. Why is it in? The more I give, the more. You must give from a willing heart. Willing heart. Don't, don't, don't let anybody pressurize you. When you go to offices and people are like, why are you giving this? Tell the person, please, I don't want to have this conversation with you. Can we just end it? When people start talking about, why are you people giving? Why Walk away. Because if they won't give, you can't force them. Why are you trying to reason with them? When they are chasing girls and giving money to them, do they come and reason with you? One of my daughters was telling me, during the Valentine's Day, the land cruisers that were coming to her school, they were coming to take the girls. 
Wow. Do you know what they are going to do? Do you know how much money they will spend? And you, you come to church and you want to honor God. Look at it. How much do you give to your children? When you go to shop, how much do you give to your children? Listen. I went to somebody's office last week. The person said to me, Pastor, my seed for 31st is already ready, so I'm putting it in an investment. You and the person, when you compete, will you win? The room is quiet now. And I know the bracket. <laughs> I know what. Mm. Because the me bottom corner, a sue. I put it. He said, Pastor, this is for you. This one is for 31st. God knows how to fund his project. It's not you. Are we together in this place? Now I want to close now. now hey, I've said I want to close. Uh, I'm not closing. It's okay. It's okay. The rest, I'll keep it. Should I keep it? Last scripture. Malachi chapter 1 verse 6 to 8. A son honors his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? God says, you must fear me. Where is my reverence? Where is my fear? <laughs> Say the Lord of hosts unto you. I want everybody to look at this scripture. Please put the scripture on the whole screen. Malachi 1 verse 6. <laughs> a son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Say the Lord of hosts unto you, O priest, that despise my name. And ye say, wherein have we despised your name? Continue You offer polluted bread upon my altar and you say, wherein have we polluted thee? In that he say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. Continue. Mm. And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor, if he will be pleased with thee and accept thy presence, here the Lord of hosts. What is he my level is like the level of your governor. A man in reputation. When you need something from him, there's a way you behave. You go early. You speak to him with respect. You offer him a sacrifice. And you don't give him something that will let him insult you. He says, whatever you want to give me, when you bring it before me, offer it to your governor and see if you gain favor with him. It means that whenever you are coming to God, you must be mindful of what you honor him with. He says, don't give me beyond what you don't have. But if you have it, honor me with it. Wherever you are, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Pray. Lord, I heard too much today. I changed my life. Where, where you've gotten it wrong, talk to God and say, Father, I did not know. I did not know. I did not know. I've messed up in so many ways. God, I have not gone by the scriptures, by the law of God. But today I've come to know your truth. I've come to know your truth. God, help me. 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 Huh. God, help me. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 26. He says, my son, give me thy heart and let thy eyes observe my ways. My son, give me thine heart. My daughter, give me thine heart and let thy eyes observe my ways. God is saying, give me. They first gave their heart to him. God is asking for your heart. He says, I don't need your money. Give me your heart. When you give me your heart and you start giving to me, it will be an act of worship. It will be an act of honor. Everybody pray. He says, don't give me what I have not given you. But if I have made a room for you, honor me with it. If I have... If I've given it to you, give me what is mine. Honor me. Honor me. Bless me with it. I want everybody to pray. Pray. Honor me. That's what God is asking for. Honor. God wants honor. He wants honor. Spirit of the living God, we come before you. We come before you. Forgive us. Forgive us where we've gotten it wrong. 
Father, we, we ask for forgiveness. Lord, there are things we will not even give to our children, yet we bring it to you. Today we change. God is not asking you for something that he has not given. He says, according as I have blessed you, that's what I'm asking for. According. According. Don't choose to come and tip me. I am not your waitress. I am a father. I'm a God. I'm a father. Where is my honor? Where is my fear? Hmm. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Oh, go there. He said to somebody, because you were not mindful to give me the honor. Ah, as long as I live, says the Lord, there shall be nobody who will sit on your throne. Nobody, nobody will do it. Because you did not honor me. Because you did not give me what is mine. <laughs> he says, nobody. He says, nobody will say that. I want you to pray, God. Where I've gotten it wrong, forgive me. Let it not go to my children. Everybody pray. He says, every man shall give as he's able according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he has given thee. Open up your mouth and pray. He said to the man who was faithful with five, in Luke 19, verse 17, he says, And he said unto him, Well, well done, good servant, because thou have been faithful in a very little. Have thou authority over ten cities? Have thou authority? Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little. Have thou authority over ten cities? Ten. When you are faithful, God increases and multiplies it. His faithfulness, his faithfulness. Lift up your voice and pray. Ah, he said, for we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. If there first be a willing heart, if there first be a willing heart, if there first be a willing heart, it is accepted according to that a man has and not according to that he has not. God is saying, you have it. Honor me with it. Not what you don't have. If you have it, Honor me. Everybody pray. Father, we thank you. Forgive us where we've gotten it wrong. I want us all to pray a repentant prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Where I got it wrong, Father, forgive me. Sanctify me by your blood. Please have mercy on me. Please, Lord, have mercy on me and my children. Remember us. And show us kindness. Forgive us where we got it wrong. Have your way in our heart. Be our Lord and personal Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. One more time, put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Was it a good sermon? Ah. Sometimes you need to be taught the truth. It's working for me. He will not force you. Jesus, give out. Some people come for for envelopes they don't give they come for the envelope and they please give me have an envelope in there want to give yes online yeah thank you too. please pray over that offering in your hand honor God with it ready honor God with it honor God pray over it Thank you. Pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, O God. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you, Holy Spirit. We honor you, Holy Spirit. We honor you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give our friend. Let's give our friend. special seed come to the altar. Come to the altar, please. The special seed come to the altar. The 
listen. You don't have to be afraid. No evil will befall you. This pregnancy as your shepherd, it will be the easiest pregnancy you would ever have. Listen to me as your prophet. Never be afraid of anything. When you dream and you see anything, when you wake up, eat. Don't even pray. I said do what? Eat. Listen. I said do what? Eat. Because the devil is running you. Nothing will happen. Any rubbish prophecy you receive, tell them that. When somebody calls me that I saw something, listen to me. Tell the person, please hold on. If it is not good, keep it. And pray about it. I don't want to know. Let's talk later. And cut the call. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I said, what? Well, don't let anybody open a gate that you are not ready to enter. Are you listening to me? So when somebody calls you, oh, uh, how are you? I mean, I saw a dream or a vision. Say, please hold on. If it is good, tell me. If it is not good, I don't want to hear. Let's talk later. Mm? Bye bye. No, 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 no. You know, I need to tell you. Tell the person that I will cut the line on you if you don't stop that. And be that strict. If you violate it, you are on your own. Are you listen to what I'm saying. I said, what? Well, mm-hmm. See the way I'm very stern. I know what I'm telling you. Don't listen to rubbish. Don't listen to. Don't listen to. Somebody help me say it to her. Don't listen to. Thank you. Pray over it. Raise your hands. Pray over that seed in your hand. Thank God for it. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you praise. We exalt your name. Thank you for the privilege to give. I bless your name. Even if you are giving via Momo, come and stand to, at the altar. Come and stand at the altar. Heavenly Father, I pray everyone that is giving, let the heavens open. Let unusual blessings, unusual favors, unusual increase come to all of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, what is this? Last week, the envelopes. Last week, join your tight. Okay, you send it. God bless you. Uh, don't move. Don't move. Stand. Last week. Last week. This is today. Okay. Last week. Last week. What is this last week thing? I don't know what it is last week. Uh, oh, you did, did you write your names? <laughs> oh, la. So what would you do last week? Tight. Okay, if you didn't write, you no problem. I will, I will pray. Send me your name. Last week, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Tight. Tight. Last week, last week. I'm going to pray over these specific envelopes. Ah, didn't say people should go. Lift up your hands. Stand. If you, you came here, stand. Father, I activate a new wind over their lives. Blowing the harvest from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Let there be uncommon openings of blessings, favors, promotions, opportunities, increase, and grace. Let everyone be blessed. Those who are sending online, let them be favored and blessed. We decree unusual turnarounds for your children in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Last week. Okay. Hands tight. Hands giving. Tight. Okay. Stand to your feet. It's up, up close. Okay. Oh, it's 11. Pepe, pepe. Stand. Lift up your hands. Oh, I think the Oyarifa people joined us. God bless you for joining us from Oyarifa. Have a good day. Raise your hands. Heavenly Father, I send forth your people with your protection and covering. Every life is covered by the blood of Jesus. Evil will not befall us. Blessings will follow us. This week, unusual openings, unusual honor. Things that people are believing you for. Visas, endorsements, confirmations, let it be released. Let miracles, let documents and deals be signed. Let doors be opened for your people in Jesus' name. Amen. For you this week, I'm praying, please. Send me that name.